What's up, everybody? Welcome to fucking camera angle. Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today is July sixth, twenty thirteen, and we're gonna go over a little bit of Q and A today because I got a few good questions in the comment section that I feel like everybody can learn from. So again, this is usually what I'll do: is I'll pick those questions and answer them in the video instead of trying to type all that stuff in there and cram it all in in so many characters. So I'm too nasty. That's his screen name. Said, what do I think about the idea of bulking for two weeks, keeping the calories around 250 above maintenance, which for me gives great progress in the gym when I hit it really hard. And then on the third week, you reduce the calories by 900, keeping the protein roughly the same, reduce the volume in the gym by 50%, approximately, and keep the weights the same. Now, here's the problem. that He wants to get lean and, and bulk at the same time. Here's the problem that I have with this now. First of all, what if your body needs more than 250 calories above maintenance? How would you know? What if you're limiting your growth by only putting it 250 over maintenance? Okay, and then you're only doing it for two weeks, which is not really enough time to gauge whether you're actually gaining or not. Then you're going to reduce your calories by 900, which is definitely going to put you in that kind of deficit, and reduce the volume in the gym. Now, basically what you're doing is you're not really giving your body a chance to grow. You're trying to grow and then to cut. Now, I don't know if you've ever started a contest diet, but it takes a few weeks for your body to get into that, that fat-burning mode. Or if you're trying to bulk, it takes a little while for your metabolism to actually slow down after a competition, like maybe a month or month, maybe six weeks, before you start gaining any mass. So the first two weeks after a competition, my, my metabolism is cranking. I gain almost no weight unless I really push the junk food. It's very hard for me to put on weight, and that's pretty typical post-contest unless you binge on shitty foods then you put on a lot of water and you know glycogen but it's not muscle size so what do I think about that I think that if you kept your calories about this is just for instance you know I'm not a big calorie guy or you know different macronutrient ratios etc what I do think is if you kept your calories at about 200 above maintenance and those 200 came from protein and you stayed on that and didn't fuck around and eat junk food and train hard in the gym and left it that way for three or four months, then you would see gain in muscle mass with very minimal gain of body fat. And then if you decided to cut, you would slowly do the opposite. Not two or three weeks, it's just not enough time for your body to make that turnaround. And you can give it a shot and see what you think, but even on gear, which I don't know if you're on gear or not, the body doesn't respond that fast to going from one direction to the other. So... John Griffiths, now this is a guy who kind of challenged me a little, I don't know if you call it challenge, but he wanted to put out there that metabolic damage is in fact a real thing. Now, I apologize if I said it the wrong way, but metabolic damage from dieting for a contest is not a real thing. It does not happen. It does not fuck you up like that. It doesn't matter what you do, how much you starve yourself, it's not damage. It's adapted, okay? And he said, why did my fat loss plateau when I was eating 1,500 calories from tuna eggs, <clears throat> excuse me, and doing 30 minutes of cardio a day? because your body adapted to the 1500 calories. If you didn't change anything and you left it at 1500, yes, your body will slow down and adapt to the 1500 calories. Nobody who gets lean for a contest stays on certain calories and certain training programs. Their cardio increases, it decreases, it can be high intensity, low intensity where it changes. The calories um, don't necessarily mean 1500 is pretty low for an average guy. If you're a competitor, I'd say that that's really low, but Refeeds are used, carb up days, low carb, I mean there's all these different things. You don't just reduce your calories, push your cardio, and then expect your body to get lean. It's going to at some point just level off and stay there. And that, again, is not metabolic damage. That is a metabolic adaptation to, to what you're doing to it. It's not damage. It can be undone. If you threw in, you know, at that point, two days of high carbs and then dropped your carbs back down again, I guarantee your body would change again. If you change your cardio from, let's say, 30 minutes of high intensity to 33 minutes where you're integrating high intensity, low intensity intervals, it would change. It just depends on what you're doing and how you're putting it together and how you're making your body adapt. You made it adapt to 1500 calories on 30 minutes. And my opinion is if you're trying to get lean, 30 minutes a day is not enough unless you have a very active job. If you're very inactive, you're a student or you're sitting at a desk all day, an hour of cardiovascular to me a day is not excessive. Okay, your body is made to move, it's made to fucking move around, it's made to get from one place to the other, it's made to exercise and have all your systems work together. And if you're not doing that, no, of course you're not going to get the results. 
S7R31F. I'm not. That sounds more like a serial number than a person, but that's the handle. And he said, so a long-term caloric deficit doesn't cause a drop in metabolism? Question mark. Isn't a reverse dieting coming off a show the right thing to do? Yes, long-term reduction of calories does cause a drop in metabolism, but that's not metabolic damage. That's metabolic adaptation. It's like the calluses on your hands. They adapt to the stress that you put on the bar over and over again. If you then put a glove on, the calluses go away. It adapts in a different way. Same thing. Your body adapts. So... I don't know what you guys are thinking or how you guys think people diet for competitions to get that lean, but it's not like we jump in and go, okay, well, I'm eating 3,000 calories now. I'm going to put 1,700 calories in my body, do an hour of cardio for the next 16 weeks, and I'm going to get ripped. No, your body's going to adapt. And the smart trainers, smart bodybuilders, smart trainees know when the body adapts, you have to change something. You have to get it to move. Dr. Serrano, who uh, works a lot with um, Mountain Dog, which is uh, John Meadows, had a great explanation on why you should do refeeds and how the metabolism slows during a diet and when you should use a refeed, etc. You can Google his uh, or search his stuff on YouTube. It's on uh, Mountain Dog, Mountain Dog One or Mountain Dog Training, John Meadows. Google any of that stuff and Serrano will come up. And you'll see that nobody's out there, like, if you think that somebody's out there just following the same diet and same program for 20 weeks and they get in contest shape, you have been misinformed. Someone is misleading you, okay? Or you misinterpreted the data or whatever. But the bottom line is nobody who diets to get in shape has the same diet the whole way through. That's just a fact. So I hope these three questions can help you guys learn a little bit more about metabolic adaptation, metabolic damage, and why your body can't go from one direction to the other in an instant. Like in, you know, you do two weeks bulking, one week cutting. It doesn't work like that. Now, it does work like if you went low carbs and threw high carbs for two days, it does rebound, but that's not the same thing. That's not the same kind of metabolic adaptation that happens when you're trying to build muscle. You're just filling the muscle up with carbohydrates and, and uh, water, which is how that works. It's something totally different. So there are ways to perceive that the body can adjust that fast, but building muscle and burning fat, it does not adjust within a week's time to get you the results that you want. Biocetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. www.biocetraining.com is the blog and we're out.